Formula One heads into its second week in a triple header. This time we make a permanent home for the next few weeks in the Styrian Hills. Welcome to the Red Bull Ring in Austria. This is the first of two races back-to-back -back here in Austria. This weekend is the Styrian Grand Prix. The next weekend is the Austrian Grand Prix, followed then by a two-week break before announced a maximum of 140,000 fans will be in attendance with the British Grand Prix. In early August, it's Hungary before the summer break, then another triple header with Belgium, the Netherlands and Italy. A two-week break before Russia, back-to-back -back as well, with a to-be-confirmed race on the 3rd of October. Back after that, we'll head off to Japan on the 10th, then on the 24th of October, we head over to Austin, Texas, Mexico on the 31st for Halloween, the Day of the Dead, then on the 7th of November, it's the Brazilian Grand Prix, then a week later, we'll go over to Australia, back-to-back -to -back as well with Saudi Arabia, and Abu Dhabi. In terms of the driver standings, it's Max Verstappen who leads on 131 points to Lewis Hamilton after victoring the French Grand Prix. Sergio Perez is in a battle with Lando Norris. Valtteri Bottas, halfway through the page one table in P5, he's battling with Charles Leclerc, as well as Carlos Sainz, Pierre Gasly, Daniel Ricciardo, and Sebastian Vettel, all for the top five positions. On page two, it's pretty much how we found it as we entered France. Coming into Styria, though, it's Alonso on 17 points, Ocon 12, then Stroll, Sonoda, one apiece for Alfa Romeo's Raikkonen and Giovinazzi, no points for Schumacher, Russell, Mazepin or Latifi. In terms of the Constructors' Championship, Red Bull lead the way by a lot. 37 points now to Mercedes is the gap. McLaren versus Ferrari still very close, 110 to 94. Alfa Tari and Aston Martin fighting each other, closing up on them as well as Alpine. Alfa Romeo struggling at the back. Williams and Haas still waiting to get off the board. It's the 2021 Styrian Grand Prix at the Red Bull Ring, and this is your Grand Prix preview. Hello everybody and welcome to the Outdoor Studio for the 2021 Styrian Grand Prix preview show. It's our second race in two weeks, part of the triple header. And for the next two races, we're here at the fantastic Red Bull Ring in Spielberg, Austria. This weekend, it's the second ever Steermark Grand Prix, banned this year to the Styrian Grand Prix. Next weekend, it's our traditional race in Austria. And alongside me once again is uh, Megan Birch. Megan, a lot coming into this weekend. First of all, though, we have to talk about the great race we had last time out at Paul Ricard. It's unusual to say that. It was a great race. It's very unusual to say that. Almost unbelievable. Inhuman. Yeah. It was, it was weird that it was more of a strategy race. And we had the occasional moments of side-by-side -side actions. But for once, it was Max Verstappen becoming the predator, doing exactly what Lewis had done to him previously, Hungary. Karma. Yeah, Hungary, Bahrain, uh, Barcelona. He pitted, he changed strategy, and he got the overtake done on the penultimate lap. Was that a Red Bull win? A two-stopper was clearly the favourite over a one-stopper. It was, and maybe if Mercedes had listened to Valtteri Bottas, they would have got a win. Yeah, Valtteri saying over the radio as well. Uh, did no one listen to me when I said it was going to be a bleeping two-stop as well? Red, uh, Mercedes... They said that way before Red Bull even made their two-stop. Yeah, and the tyres were going off as well. The hard tyres getting them, what was it, 32 laps in the end, uh, taking them way beyond their uh, point of no return. It was very much a, a strategy of Mercedes messed up, and it's rare for them. And when they mess up, they mess up big time, and they did it again here in France. Mm, they certainly did. Hamilton and Bottas and Mercedes now have not won since May at Barcelona. Red Bull are on the track of winning three races in a row. Two for Verstappen, one for Perez. They've got such a lead in the Constructors' Championship now. Mm. Whatever it was, it 26 points, something like that, in the gap? Around that, yeah. And I remember they were four behind on what Red Bull were... Last time, Last yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's changing dramatically. So it's around about, oh, it's a big flies through. It's a lot more at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. It flew past my head. <laughs> it's a lot more at the moment than what it was. And Max Verstappen getting, what was it, a 16 point gap in the Drivers' Championship? 12. 12 point, thank you. He's just getting more and more and more. 131 to 119. I don't know why I remember <laughs> that. I think that right now Mercedes are on one 
84. Yeah, so it's changed dramatically a bit. Okay, Megan, coming into this weekend then, we're now coming home to Red Bull's home circuit. For the first time ever, they come to the Red Bull ring as leaders of the Drivers' and the Constructors' Championship. They've won here twice before, both with Max Verstappen in 2018 and 2019. It's looking hopeful. Admittedly, last year's two races in Syria wasn't all that well received. He, Max was tied in Austria 1 and then in Austria 2. He was battling back and forth with difficult weather conditions. But mm. the car they've got this year, the position they're in this year, are we going to see a sort of resurgence from the team? I really hope that we do because they've got the pace this year for it, as they've clearly shown all season and it like really really shows due to them being leading drivers and constructors we're going for some tricky weather this weekend uh, which is what i find interesting as well because last year's steering in grand prix excuse me, as uh, well you know hey fever's bad out here but yeah. uh, last year's steering grand prix as well you might remember uh in free practice one and two was dry-ish, a little bit of rain. Yeah. Free practice three and qualifying completely downpoured. It was a complete washout. Uh, we got qualifying underway 40 minutes later after free practice three was cancelled. But this weekend, the weather forecast looks pretty much like it is in the UK right now, overcast. But mm. it's thunderstorms predicted tomorrow. Very heavy thunderstorms for the two practice sessions. Saturday, heavy, heavy rain. Uh, to which point qualifying might be a washout again. Uh, but Sunday, it's the worst of the lot. Lightning storms, thunder and lightning, uh, horrific weather conditions. We're in for a balanced storm this weekend, surely. I kind of hope that it does end up like that, though. At the end of the day, we want to see some action here at Syria. Absolutely. And we're two battles of races, and we often get good racing here uh, at the Red Bull One because it's a short track race. It's uh, it's only about uh, uh, 11 corners, nine to the left, three to the right. It's also about, about 12, actually, but you don't feel some of them. It's very distorted, the track. You'll see it at the moment in, in Lap Attack. But it is such a fast circuit. It's such an aggressive circuit. It's one that I can't wait to find out what's going to happen next. Uh, coming into this weekend, then, uh, let's go on to... Uh, what happens as well. Uh, this race here, the Steering Grand Prix, added because Turkey got dropped off the calendar mm. that was replaced for Canada. So we're here, two races on the balance. Do you think it's right that Formula 1 have added a second race here in Austria? Well, I know that Austria is always quite a good thing when it comes to racing. I mean, I love the fact that we like got another Austria. Yeah, two in a row, back to back. Yeah. Part of a triple head. It's a long one, yeah. I love uh, it. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a great one as well. Uh, going into this one then as well, let's just talk about some of the midfield teams. Ferrari did quite well here last year. Podium for Charles Leclerc. They've been getting on the bounce. This track should suit them a lot more. It's short. It's fast. It's not really relevant that much as to where the car has been performing badly at Paul Ricard, where the Ferrari's tyres fell off. This should be quite a good race for Ferrari this weekend. I hope that it is because it will threaten... Mercedes even more because I don't know where the Amical Structure Championship will either fourth Ferrari, or third. Uh, the Ferrari, th uh, Ferrari fourth, McLaren third. Yeah. yeah, it's just going to threaten them. I hope like Mercedes just like becomes really scared. Yeah, yeah, because Mercedes second. They kind of deserve to be scared. I mean, they need to get their fight back into them, don't they? Yeah, and uh, going into McLaren as well, Lando had a podium here last year. Could Lando actually be a contender for a winner this year with Mercedes engines? I think he might be able to, yeah. At least a second place. I mean, we all know he's capable of third, though. I really want him to do well. More bees flying around. Uh, talking about something else as well, Megan. Why are there multiple? <laughs> this I thought we they were dying out. I thought, uh, this weekend as well, it's the 26th Formula One race in 52 weeks. That is insane. In COVID... That is insane that we've managed to do that much. Mm. Do, are, you, are you impressed with the racing we've had over the past two seasons? I am impressed about that, and I'm even more impressed that this season's, like, touch wood that all the drivers have been, like, well. Yeah. Okay, right, let's uh, take a look, then, around the Red Bull ring. We're here for the next two races as well, so get used to this lap attack. It's going to remain the same. Let's take a look around the Red Bull ring here in Austria. <laughs> Let's take a look around the Spielberg circuit in Austria, the Red Bull Ring, 2.683 miles, 10 corners. It is a short track and always delivers us with great racing. 
Start the lap then down towards turn one. Accelerate uphill, flat out, eighth gear, drop down to turn one, uphill, fourth gear, 90 degree, right hand as you accelerate back up. Little kick then coming into turn two as well. That counts as the second corner mainly for motorbikes before you come up into Remus, turn three, hard on the brakes, second gear, another 90 right as well, flying down now, out of turn three as well, towards turn four, Sochless Gold, eighth gear, down to just fourth gear, at 175 kilometers an hour, fly the car in, be careful not to run over on the slightly banked exit curb as you come round turn six at Pirelli, Flat out once again at the exit. Fifth gear, hold the exit curve nicely. Fly through turn six and seven at the Vodge curve before coming down to Rint at turn nine. Over the crest of the browser, that's been present on every variation of the track. Fly in towards turn seven at the Rint curve. Into turn ten, fifth gear, 200 kilometers an hour. Accelerate at the exit, open up the DRS, and that is a lap of the Red Bull Ring in Austria. It is a fantastic short track and delivers great racing every single year. One thing about filming a pre-recorded programme outside as well is the fact that there's been a clock added behind us which shows the same time it doesn't move along with the footage but uh, pre-recorded programmes are always more fun that way. Uh, uh, we'll be live tomorrow of course with Maybe all of the time details. We'll sit there. Yeah, next time we'll sit over there in the other uh, seating area. Uh, but uh, we've got... Uh, a lot of racing coming up this weekend as well. We've got the Formula One, we've got the MotoGP, but let's just talk a little bit about W Series. Uh, that kicks off on Saturday as well. Uh, still not sure if we're covering it, are we? I'm not sure. We'll, f we'll find out about that later. All I know is I have to book some tickets for something else to do a college. Oh, really? That's nice. Then. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the W Series returning as well. Jamie Chadwick was the champion back in 2019. Uh, it's, it's a brilliant effort that... Uh, W Series, uh, the women's uh, racing series, on the same bill now as Formula One. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? I'm just talking about that as well because as, as, like a, as, a, as, a, as a woman, mm -hmm. what do you feel like seeing that there are opportunities in motorsports other than um, the, the alternative management roles, which would be brilliant we see for an actual yeah. driver? How do you feel about that? I like it. I like the fact that there's a W Series now because it... It's just so much more opening. So it's like, oh, it's not just men there. I mean, we see that all the time with Jess Hawkins. Yeah, you know, being around the paddock and zipping around in touring cars, Aston Martin, everywhere else. Yeah. Jess Hawkins has been there amazing recently as I'm well. I'm sure she does more races than Lewis. I think she has been doing more races in the past couple of weeks. She's certainly been non-stop. Uh, if I've been non-stop, she's been non-stop because we've been doing about the same, actually. Uh, touring car. Well, she did, she did uh, F1. In Baku, touring cars, France, Austria. That's pretty much the run we've been on as well. So mm -hmm. she's done just as lot as here. So the W Series is going to be quite good as well. Uh, also, another point, uh, we'll move away from W Series for quickly and just return to the fact is that uh, Lewis Hamilton has just said in the press conference, actually, as we're uh, watching this as well, uh, that contract negotiations are underway now uh, at Mercedes between him for 2022. And he's very keen on Valtteri Bottas remaining his teammate. Let's just touch on that a second. Because there's been a lot of rumour mills circling around that Bottas is going to be replaced mid-season by George Russell. Well, he gets along with Bottas. Of course he's not going to want to change his teammate. I mean, it. he's been with him for quite a while. Since 17, yeah. 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 So that's... You don't really want to get rid of someone as your teammate when you've been teammate with them for four years. Is there a question that Lewis could be not afraid of George, but... If as Lewis going for a, as Lewis going for a world championship this year and probably next year as well, does he not want George in the car? I think he kind be of because he doesn't want to fight George and Max. I think he's also remembered what happened at Ferrari between Vettel and Leclerc. I yeah. think he doesn't want that to happen. Though also I think he's comfortable with this team. Oh, that bee's hanging around. It's it's my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Could be either with a flowery top. But yeah, go on. Mm. Yeah, go on about the George and uh, yeah. Russell the situation. Well, and the sight in the Ferrari. I just Leclerc. think that he might think history is repeating itself since George Russell is a good driver and it, he has the potential to be maybe better than Lewis if he moved to Mercedes. I mean, there's always a chance of that. And he's shown his absolute skill and he does have quite similar driving styles to Lewis. We're going to be in for a very interesting one, aren't we? Where do you think that'll play out? Is, is are Mercedes likely going to do a swap mid season or are they just going to leave it how it is? I think a swap mid-season will be too complicated for them. So Leave I think it. we're just 
see how it goes. Chances of George in the car for 22? I think there's a chance. I mean, there's always a chance. I think this is quite heightened at the moment, especially with Valtteri not feeling like he's being heard enough, which conveniently enough is the exact same way that Ricardo felt when he was leaving Red Bull. It was, yeah. Bang on. See, that's why you're expert in the pundit roles when you don't miss the next five races as well. You've been here for quite a while now. Uh, Ian Burge is back with us this weekend as well for some of the sessions. Uh, he'll be with me in free practice one. I can take FP2, I believe, tomorrow. I love that. That probably switches around. But anyway, Ian Burge back with us this weekend as well. Uh, he, he was in the French Grand Prix for 13 minutes, uh, for 13 laps, sorry. Yeah. But uh, uh, just a quick brief appearance. But he'll be back with us uh, this weekend. Just checking he's actually in the other room. Uh, but he'll be back with us, which is going to be a lot more fun. So, Megan, talking about this weekend then, tomorrow could be a washout, but who do you think is going to go fastest if we get a dry session? Which is looking unlikely, by the way. If it's a dry session, I get the feeling that we could see an appearance from... I think definitely the Aston Martins will do well, because yeah. they've been very adamant of sh making themselves known at the moment. Though I think the team that will definitely strive amongst everyone a bit further up I think it will be obviously Red Bull though I also think McLaren's just going to be like hi we're still around it's going to be a lot more fun this weekend then right here's your coverage details for the weekend and you can join us for free practice one tomorrow at 10 20 the session going away at 10 30 free practice two 150 British summer time the session underway at two on Saturday you can join us uh, for free practice three 10 50 uh, British number 10, the session gets underway at 11 and qualifying from 1.40 with build up and the session underway at 2 and it's the same time for the race on Sunday, 1.30 for a 25 minute pre-recorded build up show and then we're live at 5 to 2 with the race getting underway at 2 o'clock for the Styrian Grand Prix. Lots to look forward to this weekend. And also a reminder for you, what Mona GP, uh, the TT Aston race on Sunday, that's at one o'clock British summer time as well. That'd be live with Megan in the box as well. We also have the three British Touring Car Championship races uh, coming up as well, uh, live from Brands Hatch. Some of them will be pre-recorded as well. We'll catch up on race two, going into race three because of the F1 situation as well. So get ready for Brands Hatch this weekend to be a little bit distorted uh, for the British Touring Car Championship as, as we're not on site uh, for this weekend's BTCC uh, with the F1 going on. But my thanks to Megan. We'll see you throughout the weekend as well as always. And uh, we'll join you tomorrow for free practice one from the Styrian Grand Prix at the Red Bull Ring in Austria. We're underway at 10.20 British summer time. Bye for now.